Okay, great. So we're in Module 3, and this is Section 3, and let's spend some time talking about the chart of accounts. Remember I told you in the very beginning when we were setting up our company file that based on how we answered all the questions, QuickBooks would create a generic chart of accounts for us. So what we're going to do is go in and look at that list, and we're going to be editing that list because there's quite a few things you'd want to add to that list or edit. Now go ahead and get out a pen and paper because this is going to be the one place you'll want to take lots of notes. Alright, so I'm on the home screen and here's how you get into the chart of accounts. And this is what a generic chart of accounts looks like. So let me give you an idea of how it's set up. So first of all you're going to see that here's the name of the account and if you have the general ledger numbers turned on then you would see those listed first and these are listed alphabetical per type so that means when you look over at these fixed assets for example that these would normally be alphabetical but because we have the numbers turned on then they're in numerical order now let me just review where you would turn those numbers on or off if you didn't want those I'm gonna go up to edit on the menu and I'm actually gonna come down to the preferences now if I go all the way to the top grouping accounting and then click on the tab that says company preferences here's where that checkbox is to use the account numbers so I've got mine turned on and I'll go ahead and leave them on but I want you to know where that was alright let's go ahead and click OK and get out of that now what I want to do is talk to you about the items on this list that you would definitely want to add and of course you're not going to get them all right away so if it comes to be six months later and you see there's one you need to add, that would be okay. But we'll get the bulk of them set up right now. Now we're going to talk about the different types. You can also see the currency if you have that turned on and the balance in that particular account. Okay, so the very first type that I want to talk to you about are your bank accounts. And you'll notice that you don't have any bank accounts set up already. So if you wanted to write a check right now, QuickBooks would give you a message saying that you don't have any bank accounts, would you like to create one now? So here's how we're going to create it. If you notice at the bottom left of your screen, there is a option that says account. And when you click the arrow, here's where you can create a new account, edit an existing, or delete. And let me just mention that you cannot delete in QuickBooks from any list if you've used that item even one time because it does play into your numbers so if you've got something you need to delete why don't you consider making it inactive and a good example might be maybe at some point you had a bank account that you use and let's say you close that account midway through the year it doesn't hurt to leave it on the list but you can actually hide it by making it inactive it will still pull those numbers onto reports for you okay it just hides them from the list you can always activate them again if you needed to and I'll show you how to do that here shortly. Right now we're going to create a new account. Now the first thing QuickBooks asks you is what type of account is this you're trying to create? And we're going to be going through all these different types, but let's go ahead and click on bank account here because I wanted you to notice that when you choose one of these options that it gives you a definition or some examples of what a bank account would be. So you can see obviously checking accounts, savings accounts, money market, petty cash, and I would add one to this list. And this is something you may want to jot down. A lot of times it's called cash contributions or cash expenditures, whatever you'd like to call it. Some businesses will have actual cash expenses that are part of their business. So for example, what if you went to the parking garage to get your business license renewed and you come out of the garage and it costs you a dollar twenty-five let's say you give them a dollar bill and a quarter well that's a legitimate business expense it has no other way to get in QuickBooks unless you set up an account for that so when you set it up make sure it's a bank account I'm gonna go ahead and click continue since we're trying to create our checking account here now if on that first screen you picked the wrong type notice you get a chance to pick the correct type again right here now here's where I'm going to add the actual general ledger number now it's not going to provide one for you you're going to have to put one in now I looked ahead of time and decided that I wanted to use 10,000 as my number 
The next thing it asks you to do is give your account a name, and you can actually call it anything you'd like. I'm going to call this one checking, but it could be that in your business you have a payroll account and an operating account. Call them that. It could be you want to call one First Federal and one BB&T. You can name them anything you'd like. Now this is not a sub-account of another. We're going to go into sub-accounts in a little bit. And notice that if you do have the multiple currencies option turned on, then you could see here that you can choose which currency you'd like to see this in, and in this case the U.S. dollar. Now description is totally optional. Most people know what a checking account is, but if you're sharing this file with someone, you may want to put a description of the particular bank or the fact this might be the operating account. But remember that someone's got to be on this exact screen to see that description. There is a place to put your bank account number and your routing number, but I wouldn't put that information here unless you happen to sign up with one of the ancillary services that QuickBooks offers that needs that. But other than that, there's really no reason to put that information in. Now you will need an opening balance. So what this means is, as of your start date, what was the balance that your checking account had in it? So if you're starting January the 1st, then pull out your January bank statement, and its beginning number is the number you want to put in. So whatever month you're starting with, it, that month's beginning number is the number you want to start with. So I'll just say in this case that we had $15,000. It doesn't take commas or dollar signs. If you happen to type those in, it will give you a little error message. So just put the, just the numbers in there. Now, it also asks you for a statement ending date. So if I'm starting my company January the 1st, then my ending date would actually be December of the previous year, December 31st, actually. But if you put January the 1st, it's not a big deal. Little trick with dates anywhere in QuickBooks. If your date is selected like mine is, you can use the plus sign to move up a day or the minus sign to move back a day. Just a little thing I thought I'd throw in there. All right, I'm going to click OK here, and you can see now that it thinks I have $15,000 as of the start date. Now, just to tell you what this section down here is all about, if you wanted QuickBooks to pop up when you get to a certain check number that you put in here, it'll pop up and actually say, hey, you're out of checks. Would you like to buy them from us? Now, save and close means I finish entering this information, go ahead and save this, and take me back to the previous window. Save and new would mean go ahead and save this information and put me on a new blank screen just like this, because maybe I have a second bank account to enter. And then cancels, go ahead and cancel out of this. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close. And by the way, if your transaction is more than 90 days in the past, like in this case, then it will ask you, are you sure you want to save this? There is an option in the preferences, if you like, to turn this off. So I'm going to go ahead and just say yes in this case. And also you'll notice in this particular case that it says QuickBooks bank feeds will only work with accounts that use U.S. currency. And that's basically what we're doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and check this box so it doesn't ask me again. And then I'll click OK. And also, from time to time, you're going to get this window basically asking if you want to set up the online services. We're not going to do that right now, so I'm going to go ahead and say no, and we will talk about that a little bit later. But here's what I want you to see right now. I now have a checking account, the type is bank, and I have a balance of $15,000 in that checking account. So you should always be able to look here and see what the balance is in this account. And by the way, not that you have to know this, but if you're an accountant or a bookkeeper, you know there's a debit and a credit for everything. So the flip side of this entry is this opening balance equity account. And by the way, if this number is ever a negative, don't freak out when you see that. It's an accurate picture of your books. If you think about a bank account, it's a plus of $15,000. But if you actually had a loan, which means you owe that money, and let's say it's more than 15, then that puts this in the negative. So you can't change that, just know it's an accurate picture. I'm going to add one more. I'm going to add a savings account here. So I'm going to go down to Account, New. I'm going to say this is a bank account. OK. 
continue. The account name will be savings. And I'm going to actually start with an opening balance of $20,000. As of my start date, and notice this time, I'm just going to type it in and click OK. Now I'm going to save and close. And I know this is more than 90 days in the past, so I'll just say yes. I am not going to set up my bank feeds right now. And notice now I have 20000 in the savings and I have 15 in the checking. Now look what happens when you don't put an account number in, like savings. So let me show you how to edit that. I'm going to click on savings. I'm going to come down to account. And this time I'll choose the edit option. Here's where I'm going to add my number. And let's say I want to use 12000 this time. And I'll save and close. And now you'll notice they're in numerical order. Okay, so going down the list, let me talk about a few other accounts that you'll definitely want to add. Assets. Now what an asset is, is something that makes your business more valuable. It could be that your business owns a piece of property. It could be your business owns vehicles, lamps, desk, chairs, anything that makes the company worth more. Some assets are liquid. For example, if you have inventory, that's actually an asset and your business is worth more, but your goal is to sell it and get it out the door. QuickBooks calls them other current assets. Fixed assets are things you plan to keep long term. I'm going to keep the vehicles, the property, things like that. So this is where the accountant is going to come in very handy. He or she is going to help you decide which accounts they would like you to set up. And these are going to be more like big buckets, not necessarily an account for every single item the business owns. So if it's vehicles, for example, he or she will help you determine the value of all of the vehicles at a particular time. And then you can enter that particular number. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video right here. And let's go into part two so we can continue talking about this chart of accounts.